What I love about gastro, it is very varied. Uh, so like one day I'm scoping, the next day I'm in clinic, the next day I'm at the other ward, the next day I'm doing some research, you know, it's very, very varied. Now, I really wouldn't worry about it from worried worry about your clinical skills when you do your research. And I'd have to really strongly, strongly encourage people to do research. I think it, I must be, I think it's a real shame how that's becoming less common uh, with trainees now. As much as I love seeing patients and I very much enjoy that part of my work, um, it's really nice to have another angle. It's really, it makes you, I think it makes you a better clinician. It's lovely to be able to offer patients to come into research studies. Hi everybody. So today we're going to be having a conversation with Dr. Rachel Cooney, who's a, who is a consultant gastroenterologist at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. So similar to the other conversations that we've been having, we would like to hear um, Dr. Cooney's experience about um, medicine, um, gastroenterology and anything else, any other words of wisdom that you'd like to share with us today. Thank so, you. If you could introduce yourself. I'm yes, so um, I'm Rachel Cooney. I'm a mental consultant here. I do a lot of inflammatory bowel disease work, so that's my main kind of subspecialty. Um, you might guess by my accent, I'm Irish. I um, grew up in the Midlands of Ireland and went to university in Dublin. Uh, and then I did all my kind of junior doctor training there. And in my registered training, I came over to England to do a PhD and then stayed. Um, so kind of went directly from my research into consultancy in the NHS and have been in here ever since. So Dr. Kinney, did you always know you wanted to do medicine? Because I know you said you did a PhD. Um, did you ever consider maybe going down to the more like research route or sticking to medicine? Yeah, so um, just by, by going into medicine in the first place, yeah, my sister's a dentist, my other sister's a nurse. And I was like, hmm, I quite like what they're doing. That sounds a bit interesting. And, um, you know, my sister dissecting a heart, a pig's heart or something, going, that's really cool. And then when she brought home the book about the cell, and this massive book, this 8,000 page book about the cell, and I thought I knew everything about the cell from my kind of equivalent of A-level biology, that kind of blew my mind. And I went, I definitely want to study more about this. But I didn't really tell anyone. I was thought a bit cocky, wanting to do medicine. Um, but my mother wasn't very encouraging, didn't think it was a great job for a woman, and um, felt I should do pharmacy. But um, I kind of set my heart on it, and yeah, never re never regretted the decision, I have to say. Um, the Doing a PhD, I was always was interested in doing some research. There was um, some people I worked with in Dublin, uh, Professor Kelleher and Professor Norris, who had done their PhD, and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. And I quite liked the idea of really focusing on one area. I wanted to be a, special, a specialist. I kind of liked knowing a lot about one area, I suppose that's why I didn't go into GP practice. Um, and so, yes, I took the opportunity to then to do a PhD. Um, I felt, yes, could I do an MD versus a PhD? I just felt if I was taking the time out to do it, I may as well go the whole hog and do, let's do a PhD. Um, it wasn't easy. It was really hard to get the position, really hard to get the funding. Um, my funding kept kind of going from one year to another. So it was very difficult to actually know that I was ever going to get to that end point. Um, but yes, eventually did. Yes. I mean, do you know what's funny? As you were speaking, I think I have the exact same cell book from oh, really? my undergraduate. Yeah, it'll be like, I don't know, a different edition, but yeah, I've got the exact same one at home my parents' house. It's really my shots. <laughs> yeah, it gets passed down. Um, so I just wanted to ask, so you know you mentioned about doing a PhD, did you feel like it affected your clinical work at all? Because I'm sure there might be other young trainees who are thinking, oh, do I take time out of my training? Do I do this, etc.? Yeah, I really wouldn't worry about it from worried about your clinical skills when you do your research. And I'd have to really strongly, strongly encourage people to do research. I think it, I must be, I think it's a real shame how that's becoming less common uh, with trainees now. You are long enough a consultant. Uh, you know, once you're there, you're there. You what, what do you do? So, and it's lovely as much as I love seeing patients and I very much enjoy that part of my work. Um, it's really nice to have another angle. It's really, it makes you, I think it makes you a better clinician. It's lovely to be able to offer patients to come into research studies um, and it's, it, you get more involved nationally. It makes it much more of an interesting job, I think, when you've got that extra uh, kind of string to your bow to be involved in research. And it can be in all different types and varies, but it doesn't all have to be lab-based. There's lots of other opportunities in research. Um, it, you don't have to do a kind of a whole PhD program if that's not your interest, but it's a real luxury taking some time to read and to, to know a lot about your area and to actually become kind of 
expert in an area and I think without taking some time out to do that it's very very difficult uh, to find that time and to get those extra skills so yes I would really strongly encourage people and I have to say that I think the NHS is fantastic at all the various other ways uh, the way they support people so you can start off with the kind of associate PI program that the NIHR run and that's a really good way to kind of dip your toe into research and see if you're in, see if you're interested get some of those skills they do they kind of various training programs as part of the associate PI scheme so most of the studies on the on the kind of NIHR portfolio have the associate PI scheme on it so I'd really really strongly encourage you to look into that it's a great way of getting involved Brilliant. And what about medical students who are also trying to like dip their toe in? Yeah. Where would you suggest they would begin? Medical students can be associate PIs too. It's not just so you don't have to be a graduate. So it really became on its own during COVID when, um, when we needed a lot of people helping out with research programmes. And, um, and a lot of the big vaccine programmes, there was a lot of uh, medical students as associate PIs. So it's another good way of doing it. Yeah, talk to uh, your supervisors, talk to the consultants to try and do, there's always little projects that you can get involved in some, some bigger than others and they can get you that experience you know even kind of local groups that you can present to be it in the hospital or in the region um, it's a really good way of kind of getting involved and getting interest and, and kind of also helpful for your CV and for your career in that way uh, but it does make it much more interesting yeah some of it is kind of some of it can be tedious going through chase notes etc is trying to take things out but it all is part of the learning process you learn how to digest information do your statistics put, and start writing things writing an abstract it is a skill in itself and like everything the more you do the better you get definitely okay i'm going to like switch tacks a little bit and ask the big question why gastroenterology why gastroenterology <laughs> What I love about gastro, it is very varied. Uh, so like one day I'm scoping, the next day I'm in clinic, the next day I'm going to be on the ward, the next day I'm doing some research, you know, it's very, very varied. I like the combination of the ward work plus endoscopy. Um, and it's really nice, it's wonderful to, when someone comes in with a bleed or a bonus obstruction or etc. You can do something, you can sort it out. So you get to use your hands, get to use your skills. It's, it's a bit of variety, a variation. And um, and then also the you, the ward work can be quite varied as well. You've got a huge range of uh, issues you have to deal with, from you know from biliary to upper GI to uh, you know liver. You you train across the spectrum. I love the MDT working of gastro. Mm -hmm. So you work very closely with surgeons, with your radiologists, your histopathologists, and it's very much in you know the, in my area the IVD nurses, the pharmacists. They all play such a key role, and I I love that team working. Your dietitians, everybody. Amazing, and in terms of like looking at like the span of uh, you know working gastroenterology, could you tell us some highlights? Highlights of working in gastroenterology. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that kind of satisfying that you know sorting out a bleed or sorting out the patient is very very satisfying. You know, I'm sorry when when you remove a food bowl is just harping on about that. People are so happy with you. They just love you. Or you know even I'm sorry even if you've evolved your listen you're it's not a very nice procedure to do but the patient is so pleased with the pain goes. So to instantly be able to help somebody is wonderfully rewarding. Um, and then I think the the, the um, I, I love about IBD is that you get to know the patient from their transition from children's all the way through their life and that it very varies so you have young old all kind of ethnicities all sort of walks of life and it makes it really interesting because you've got to tailor your um, your consultation according to the individual and you have so many different individuals walking through your door so it's wonderfully varied that's something that another thing I love about it yeah and I, I think that kind of the science behind it the, in, in my area there's so many new medications coming through so much areas of research makes it very interesting and um, more exciting brilliant and okay what about the not so amazing size and any low lights yeah, like, you know, some specialties you're not called in in the middle of the night, you will be called in, and you will, uh, not, not that often, but yes, you do have to get out of bed and come in, um, and, and that, that can be difficult, and for the older you get, the more difficult it gets. Um, you know, some, some of the kind of disorders you're dealing with are very chronic, you've got some of the functional issues, uh, and that can be difficult to manage. Um, because you, sometimes you feel a bit helpless in what you can do, but there is always little ways you can tweak and you can always try and tailor to that individual and work out where the individual is coming from. So yeah, it is, it's a, it's a challenge, but can be quite rewarding, even though difficult. And um, yeah, I suppose that's about it. 
that's it. Okay. And were there any other specialities that you considered before deciding that you want to go into gastroenterology? Yeah, I guess because I considered GP practice. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I just like the idea of sub-specialising and being good at one thing. Um, I considered anaesthetics and surgery at one stage, um, but I kept fainting in surgery, so that didn't really help. So that was the end of that. And um, yeah, in anaesthetics, I kind of enjoyed the patient contact a bit too much for you know meeting people, talking to people. So that that was the end of my anaesthetic stream at that stage. So yes, um, my mother wanted me to be a dermatologist because mm -hmm. thought it'd be nice. Uh, but um, I fell asleep at uh, some world-renowned lecturer in the Mayo Clinic and I went, obviously, it's not for me. So yes, that was about the end of my alternatives. I, I think I like the characters of the type of people who do gastro. Um, and I think it was one of my first jobs to do as a house officer and I got on well with the guys and then it just one thing led to another. Amazing. So I, when I'm starting my job in August, my first one is also gastro. So, so we'll have to convert you. Yeah, yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Seems that way. Um, okay, Dr. Cooney, so in terms of any uh, junior doctors who are watching like myself or maybe like final year students or anything, um, what three pieces of advice, if you had any, would you give to people like us who are about to enter the medical profession? Um, it could either be like interpersonal advice or professional advice, whatever you'd like to share with us. I think morale is very low at the moment and, you know, and it feels difficult, I think just be nice to each other. You know, I know that sounds really corny, but like we are all in together. We all have to help each other out. The GPs are, are struggling, everybody's struggling. So don't be dishing each other. Just try and help that person in front of you and do the best for that individual. It is corny, but it, we are really privileged to have the knowledge and skills that we have. And just to try and to remember that and to not get back bogged down in the kind of the drudgery that it can be and just try and remember that you actually can really make a difference to people and you know I, i'm always amazed talking to friends and going on the patient the doctor said this that and the other patients remember everything you say to them you have a huge impact on them and they really do look up and just be be really careful with your language and just try and be empathic remember what it might be like they're scared they're poorly they're not coming to you because they've nothing else to do for the day and just to try and remember that with each individual you see um, and be supportive of your colleagues you know I, I do feel sorry for junior doctors coming through they don't have the camaraderie we had from the hour, the way we worked our hours so just just be supportive of each other look out for each other it is a tough career but it can be a really really rewarding career is there any other two that you would like Oh yeah, to? another two. Um, yeah, don't forget about research. I would definitely strongly encourage you to, to think about research. I think it, it really is very fulfilling. And what other one you want me to have? Um, yeah, just try and get some outside interests as well, outside work. Um, it can be all consuming. Uh, so just have something that's just for you, that you kind of do for yourself. Keep up with your exercise, try and do some other things. And remember it's a marathon. Oh yes, and remember it's a marathon, yes, they, the pace, they, one of the things I should add in, remember it's a marathon, just pace yourself, look after yourself, take some time to yourself as well, you don't have to say yes to everything, but be open to opportunities and it can be a fantastic career. Amazing, thank you. And for anybody who's interested, that was Dr. Pat McCanthan, who we have also interviewed on the show, yeah. who is in the room with us right now. <laughs> Um, thank you so much, Dr. Cooney. Is there any final words that you'd like to share? Yeah, don't forget about gastro. I don't know why more women don't do it. It's a great specialty, really varied, and um, I'm more than happy to talk to people about it. And I am a mentor for the uh, BSG, so if you want any men mentorship, uh, you can apply to the BSG Mentorship Scheme. That's fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks.